Dr. Life. Thanks for having me. It's so great. I love the color, the cover of your book. Um, let's talk about this because you went to 22 publishers. So I posted a tweet on Twitter and it blew up and there were about 23 actually publishers who expressed interest in wanting to see it once I acquired a book agent. What a cool thing to do. Just putting your work out there and seeing who bites, right? Yeah, it was, um, I mean, it was a part of a pitch contest, but there are thousands upon thousands of writers pitching their books. And so you're just sort of like one little needle in a haystack. So it was definitely sort of a, a just a shock when my tweet blew up and got so much attention. So you grew up in Third Ward. Some of your family, they still live in Third Ward. I lived in Third Ward for a while. I love that neighborhood. This is your first novel. And also we should point out, you are a first generation college student. So I feel like one of the obvious questions is, how did this book even happen? I mean, how long did it take to write? And what made you decide to write a book in the first place? So this book came to me just sort of suddenly one morning. I was sitting down to write, and writing is a lot like exercise. I wanted to get into the profession, but I didn't have any formal training. I just knew that I was passionate about storytelling. Um, I do have a degree in journalism from the University of Texas, which I do, I do think helped a little bit. Um, but I sat down, and I had a voice in my head and sort of an image of a girl standing in my neighborhood over um, a, a kid who had been harmed. And she just felt very sad and very powerless to stop it. And so I thought, you know, why don't I give this character in my head a chance to speak? And so despite not really having any experience doing this really, um, I just started typing. And in about 35 days, I had about 70,000 words. Um, and so started the revising process and, and then I put it out in the world to see who, if anybody was interested in turning it into a book. It's really incredible, JL, your story. I mean, 35 days to, to write it. It was released last week and uh, just the excitement of pitching the novel. Um, let's also talk a little bit more about you besides going to um, Texas. You also were a teacher, right? Yes, I was a teacher at a KIPP school. How great was that? This is so exciting. I think what's so great about this is you don't have to be sort of pigeonholed into a career. You never know what's around the corner. Absolutely. And I love that writing is giving me the opportunity to interface with kids because that's what it's ultimately about. Writing this book was very much, I specifically wanted it to be a team book so that I could get it into the future change makers hands. How great, too, that you were able to sort of take your experience growing up in Third Ward, incorporate all those life experiences into this book. Your novel explores things like race, privilege, allyship, and is that a coincidence? I mean, given the events of 2020, everything that we've seen, the, the death of George Floyd, the Black Lives Matter movement, this timing seems like it couldn't be better. And I understand schools are actually working your novel into their curriculums. Yes, several schools are, are studying it, several local schools as well. Um, so interestingly enough, I wrote this book in 2018 because this, this, this problem, even though it has only gotten national attention last year with the civil rights protests and everything and the outrage after um, George Floyd's murder, this problem has faced our community for such a long time. So I think the book was born out of a lot of sort of unprocessed grief. And I think that it's, it is definitely fortuitous that it's coming out now when there are more people paying attention to these conversations about racism and allyship and privilege. Um, there's just more, there's more heads sort of swiveling in, in our direction during Black History Month and it's a beautiful thing. I'm very optimistic about what the book can do, especially with um, just how out, how the, the response has been from readers, the reviews and such. I think it's great that you're not forgetting about the tween reader and how important it is to get them involved and to listen to the topic. And by the way, um, I think it's great that you're paying it forward as well. We do know that the, the book, of course, is dedicated to George Floyd and books have been donated to Jack Yates High School where Floyd went to school. JL, it is great to connect with you. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you so much. We'll see you very soon. And Wings of Ebony is out now. You can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, for a link where you can connect with JL. All right, coming up, say I love you this Valentine's Day with a one-of-a-kind gift for your one and only. We've got more HL Obsessions coming up later on in today's show. Plus, Lauren Kelly is standing by with some circus fun. And coming up, we are getting a look at the first ever traveling water circus. Circus Dahlia 
is here in 